thank you for the organizer. Uh, I'm going to present a work with my uh, PhD advisor, Philippe Hobert. So it is about uh, the uh, uh, nucleation in a lot of self-assembly system. Uh, I will first begin with the experimental uh, motivations and followed by the classic mathematical literature and I will explain why we introduce our model and uh, present our main result. So we, we are studying the uh, nucleation phenomenon in uh, uh, in a self-assembly system. So uh, in the nature, a lot of uh, phenomenon can be explained by such system. In this system, there are a lot, there, there are a lot of particles. So uh, the small particles can uh, aggregate you know, to generate the big cluster. If the big cluster is not stable, it may break down into small uh, particles. So. Uh, in, uh, here is a picture taken from a biology paper. So in the 90s, they, they, they studied a, a, a model, a, a, a mechanism of the nucleation. You can see in these settings, there is a critical size uh, called nucleus. So they assume that as for, the part, for the cluster smaller than this critical size, uh, this uh, small clusters are not stable, so they are easily to be break down. And uh, for the larger clusters, they are more likely to be stable, so they can increase stably uh, to generate a, a larger one. So there are a lot of uh, experiments uh, based on this nucleation uh, mechanism. Here is a picture taking from uh, another biology paper in the 2000s. So it is about, uh, they, 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 start, they can, uh, their experiment starts with a system with only monomers. So they keep track of the uh, fraction of the polymer, polymer, polymerized proteins. So you can see on the curve, uh, Usually, uh, the, the colors represent the, represents the uh, initial concentration. So uh, we don't consider the concentration here. It will be our future work. But you can see from the picture that all the blue lines are the identical experiments. So it means that even in the identical experiments, the time for the polymerizations varies, varies a lot. And uh, at that, it begins to uh, to, uh, to polymerize this, so it will grow very rapidly. So our, our goal of the, the goal of our study is to understand why there is a very sharp transition in, in nucleation and to explain, trying to explain the very high variance of the, uh, the, the time. So in the history, there are a lot of uh, models considering this mechanism. So but, uh, the simplest one, um, the, the particles are identified by their size. So the coagulation um, reaction would be the smaller, <laughs> the particles of, of smaller size, they may uh, have reactions to generate the larger one, and the fragmentation mechanism would be the reverse reaction. So the most famous model would be the small, small Luke Hofsky model. So they only consider the bin binary reactions. So there are a lot of uh, papers on these models uh, uh, from the determinist uh, ODEs or PDEs, uh, uh, the stochastic models driven by Brownian motions or by the Poisson processes. So there are also people study the link between the stochastic models and the, the determinist models. So they prove the law of large numbers and to limit to large deviations. But uh, we think only to study the noise of the, of the convergence of the, from the stochastic model to the determinist model cannot explain the high variance observed in these experiments. So we propose our model to include the assumption of nucleus. 
So we, we, here we only consider the growth only by reactions with the monomers, and uh, we consider quite a large, uh, a large set of fragmentations. So uh, we assume that there is a critical size NC, which is the size of the nuclear. So for the clusters, mono, uh, po polymers smaller than this size, the, it breaks down easily, so, which means that the, uh, the ratio of the fragmentation rate over the, over the polymerism, polymerism rate is much higher in, in, in for the smaller, si uh, smaller particles. So in order to study this model, we introduce a scaling par um, a, a parameter. So initially, there are only monomers. So we assume that the total mass is denoted by n. The scaling assumption would be on the fragmentation rates. We are assuming that uh, all these uh, coagulation rates are in the order of one. But uh, for the smaller clusters, the fragmentation rates is linear with respect to n. And for the larger, larger polymers, the, the breakdown rate is in also in the other one. So we let UK to be the number of polymers of size k at time t. So this is an n-dimensional Markov process. We can easily write down the generators. So we are going to study this uh, n-dimensional uh, process when I'm going to infinity because in the biology system, the total mass usually is very large. So in, uh, under these settings, we can uh, write our observations in, in our mathematical language. So we, uh, we are interested in the lag time of this, uh, first of this Markov process. Uh, L delta is the, it's the number of the stable mass greater than some fraction. So uh, the, the picture means that no matter delta, what delta is, the lag time, they are closer to each other in some sense. And the high variance means that the, the fluctuation of the, the lag time is in the same magnitude of the mean value of it. So you can see this fluctuation is much, much larger than the one usually we can see from the central limit theory. So our main result is that for NC grid sensory, we, we first introduced the first nuclear times, uh, denoted by Tn, which is the first time that uh, UNC to be one. And we can prove that by, by coupling the, the lag time, is, uh, it's, it's upbounded by some uh, a sum of the first nuclear moment plus uh, log n. So this gives our motivation to study this first uh, uh, nuclear moment. We can prove that uh, when uh, this first nuclear moment scaled by n to the nc minus 3, it is converging to an exponential distribution, a random variable. So that can explain the, indicate the very high variation in, in the experiments. So in this case, if, if nc is very large, the log n is negligible uh, respect, with respect to n to nc minus 3. So you can see it might, uh, it, it can explain the very sharp uh, transition in, in the curve. So uh, uh, actually we can only prove uh, with uh, for the case that only have aggregation after the nuclear size, that uh, with very, very high probability, this, uh, this very sharp transition can happen with very high probability. So, but in the general fragmentation case, we can show, now so far we can only show it can happen with a positive probability. So I will give you a sketch of the proofs. So here, uh, here I only show the very simple reaction, which is a Baker-Doring reaction, which means that uh, when the uh, polymer of size k plus one, when it breaks down, it only breaks into uh, polymer of size k and uh, monomer. So you can see the, uh, the dynamic of the first uh, NC process uh, through the picture. So the, monom uh, the number of monomers is U1. It will have, re uh, have reaction with some UK to generate the 
uh, UK plus one. So the, 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 the rate of the, of the marker process would be in the order one. So it is lambda k times UK times the concentration of the monomer. And the uh, breakdown rate would be U, uh, UK plus one times n times the number of uh, polymers of size k plus one, it is in the order of n. So it means that there is a very strong force to slow down this aggregation. It means that uh, all these particles are pushing towards the, towards the monomers. So it will take very, very large time to, to uh, for the process UNC to reach the reach one. So we are considering this uh, this of uh, uh, NC dimensional Markov process. <laughs> it is a fast and slow system because because uh, uh, U, uh, U1 is, is usually very, very large, larger. Uh, we can prove that in some time interval it is very large. So it change very rapidly. But uh, UNC, because in the middle they are almost zero or, or in the order of one, so they are quite small. So UNC moves very, very slow. So we can study this math process by studying a, a stochastic averaging problem. So uh, the, the difficulty in our problem is we are going to study a critical time scale, which is n to the NC minus three. It is much, much larger than the space scale. It is n. So usually it's pretty hard to control, control the fluctuation in this case. And also, it is a multiple dimensional case. It is very hard to obtain the limit of the occupation measures based on the fast process. So we can handle this in our papers by using some coupling techniques and also the flow balance equations. So after these first uh, nuclear times, we can uh, find a stochastic bound by coupling to the number of stable monomers by using a supercritical bran branching process, we can show that with some probability, uh, this, this lag time is less than uh, k times log n. So uh, it will give us, because it is a pr pr positive probability, it can give us a, a renewal process. So we can give a stochastic bound for the, the real lag time L delta. Um, uh, and uh, for the pure aggregation case, we can show that the error data, uh, because in the pure aggregation case, there is a real branching process. So we can show that uh, the lag time is upper bounded by Tn plus some constant times log n uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, some high probability, one minus epsilon. So, so conclusion, we are looking at the nucleation mechanisms. And uh, we can, we, our result can, can explain the very sharp transition and the, the, and the, the high variance uh, from the experiments. Because the difference of the lag time and the nuclear moment is negligible compared to the magnitude of the first nuclear moment. And the high variance is due to the uh, the first nuclear moment is asymptotically uh, exponential distribution. So our future work will, because in this work we, we, we are proving, uh, we are assuming that uh, the fragmentation uh, rate is linear with respect to, uh, but uh, the experiment, experiment shows in some, in some cases the, the, this, uh, uh, this fragment, fragmentation rate is more likely to be n to the one third which is uh, uh, sublinear. So we are working on the general case. We believe that uh, the correct time scale would be uh, phi n to the nc minus, NC minus 2 over n. So uh, the proofs are quite similar to the linear case. And we are going to do the multi-type uh, case. And also we have some co uh, cooperation with uh, uh, biologist uh, in, in Ha and uh, Kent University, we are going to apply our result to their design of uh, the design of their experiment. Uh, here are the literature. Uh, here are the papers uh, the, from the chem chemical physics to, to our current work. And that's all.
uh, a very naive question. So the the new model, do we uh, have some numerical experiment to tell us that the new model um, works just like uh, what we I, see? I here? have a simulation of the model. Uh, it's just like the the, the experiment data. But in biology, we don't know what the NC uh, real is. Do you think you can uh, get some idea of, uh, in your model, the shape of the transition? Um, say that typically they will all follow eventually exactly the same paths to go uh, to get the nucleation. The biologists uh, do the centralized of these curves. They are all the same shape. Yeah, so can you prove that uh, uh, you, I, I you have a limit shape? No. Yeah, I cannot. Um. Uh, do, do you have, uh, after the, the phase transition, do, do you know the number of big, uh, of big polymers in your model um. with respect to the number of small polymers you have to begin with? No, we, we okay. don't have, because we have two different settings, we also look at the general fragmentation, also the only pure uh, aggregation case. So I don't know what, which case you are asking about. Uh, so for example, uh, for, for a case where the nuclear is larger than three, yeah. and C larger than three, yeah. so uh, in the, after the, the, phase, the shape transition, how many big fragments like what? What would be a typical big uh, big polymer? I, I I don't know. Oh, okay. Sorry, I don't know. Thank you.